machines Big and mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines Lifting and throwing and flying so high Building a building up to the sky You can watch them all day And never know why they're Mighty machines Get them wrong, watch them soar Sit right down and see There are stories to enjoy For every girl and boy Mighty machines Big and mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines Working for you, doing mighty things there Mighty machines Every so often on the Crotillion Railways, engines will be sent to work in unfamiliar places. It was on one of these occasions that Thomas was sent away from his branch line to help with a project up in the hills. There was a new depot being built high on the Cliffstone Mountains. The Crotillion Construction Company had called for a spare shunting engine, being that Brewster, one of the company engines, was having his monthly checkup. The depot was near the village of Cliffstone Valley, which was reached by a steep, narrow line only accessible by smaller engines like Thomas and Tilly. When Thomas arrived at the site, there was a lot of work going on. Buildings needed roofing, track was being laid, and there was a lot of building materials lying around and waiting for further use. Jack the front loader and Scoop the backhoe digger were shifting dirt and rubble from new foundations when Thomas whistled in. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Jack. And I believe you're Scoop, right? You got it. Straight from Bob's Fit. And Sunflower Valley. And Fixum. And Spring City. <laughs> I take it you've been around then. <laughs> Me and Bob's team certainly have. Good morning. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Thomas. I'm Bob. Oh, wow! Hi! No need for introductions. I've already heard so much about you, Bob. All good things, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would hope so. You can tell me more later. Right now, we have a big assignment ahead of us. Oh, yes! What will I be doing? You will be working with Isabella and Packer to pick up and drop off materials for the site and the forklift will be loading them up and collect all the spares we send back down. Sure, no problem. It'll be nice to work with a new friend. I'm sure Packer feels the same way. Just don't get too dusty or whip up too much smoke, you two. You know how I am about me paint. <laughs> ah, don't worry, Izzy. It's all like containers and pops and things. How many times have I told you, Packer? It's Isabella, not Izzy. Oh, what's wrong with Izzy anyway? Isabella's so long. Takes forever to struggle through. It's undignified. That's what's wrong with it. <laughs> Thomas couldn't help but smile. He was glad to know the pack was getting along with their new friends. After a fashion, anyway. They were creating materials for the station, piping materials for plumbing, and supplies like fuel and spare parts of the machines to deliver first. Found out a long time ago you Gotta learn to say yes when life says no Don't dwell on the bad times once they're bad That kind of thing can get you nowhere bad Cause there ain't no mountain you can't climb If you hang on tight, you just make up your mind once you set your heart to moving on, son, there ain't no road to go. All right, guys, stop messing around. Come on, and when he got back, back to Thomas found a lot more machines working around the yard. You need some cement over here? Don't worry, I'm on it. Poetry in motion. 
He was so fascinated by all the machines and work going on that Thomas started wishing he could do more. I wish I could help with a bit of the building. Maybe I can. With the help of one of those breakdown cranes, I can definitely transport this load on my own. Meanwhile, Lofty the Crane was shifting an important roofing section for the station building. The roads were packed while Rolly and Buster the steamrollers were working, so we had to ride along the railway line, which was dangerously close to the edge of the valley. Oh, okay. Oh, okay! Just a little further on the road and we should be at the site. Come on, hurry up! I gotta get my axles greased. So do I! I'll be done faster than you. I'm the better build, after all. We'll see about that. <laughs> Max! Monty! Get back here! The road's not cleared! Oh no you don't! Okay, nearly at the- ah! Ah! Get out of the way! Ah! Ah! <laughs> no, 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 no! No! Oh! What happened here? I'm so sorry. I... I just wanted to help with the building process, so I thought I'd try to deliver some of these furnishings on my own, and... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that was your job. Be that as it may, Dizzy, now's not the time for playing the blame game. We need to figure out how to get that load back up. I got it! We could get Gripper to help! His cable is really long, and he's got a winch! You're right. Unfortunately, right now, he's helping out at the Gradinia Bay docks. Oh, bother! Well, now what are we gonna do? If only we had something long enough to reach out to the end of the valley. But where would we find that? I got it! Got what, Thomas? An idea! Look, I did something incredibly silly and messed up. I'd like a chance to correct that mistake. So, may I have permission to go off-site? Um... Sure, but why? You'll see soon, Bob. I promise. We could build this scaffolding into a jib. We can hook a winch onto it and use it like an old-fashioned pulley crane to get the crate. That's a brilliant idea, Thomas. Good thinking. Thanks, Wendy. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get to work. Can we fix it? Yes, yes we, we can! can! Yeah, I think so. Assembling the odd contraption was no problem for Bob and Wendy, but bringing it up was another story. With the hoist fitted onto Isabella and Packer, and with the magnet hooked onto Thomas's winch, it would all require teamwork to get the job done. The container was stuck on a very awkward point of the valley. Lofty's magnet made it easy to collect it, but bringing it up would be the ultimate test. Is everybody ready? Ready to work! Time to go, go to the rescue! Thomas is ready! All right then! Let's get this show on the road! It was a lot harder to pull a container from off the ground than pulling it on a wagon, but Thomas didn't stop. He kept heaving the container up. I just hope the arm holds. Sure was a heave. I didn't even get my paintwork dirty. <laughs> Go figure. Splendid job, team! And a special thank you to Thomas. You were very creative with figuring out a solution to the problem. I'll be certain to thank your controller for sending over some reinforcements. But I'm not really all that, am I? I caused this whole mess. 
and all because I took up a job before asking. Well, true, but you fixed your mistake and learned from it, I trust? Oh, yes, of course. Next time, I will definitely ask before taking up a job, even if it looks really cool. Then that's all that matters. At the end of the day, you are a really cognitive tank engine. That evening, Thomas went back to the sheds to tell his friends all about the day's adventures. What's more, he had learned a valuable lesson in the importance of correcting his mistakes. As Bob and his friends taught him, with a bit of creativity and teamwork, no problem is too big to solve together. Whoa, cool your pistons there, Ralph. We're going as fast as we can. Cut us some slack. We're on a very tight schedule, Leonard, so I want things done, and I want things done on time. Those slag cars should be empty by now. And Dip, put the pedal to the metal. I'm on it, boss. I'll take a shortcut across the rails. Oh no, not again, not again, not again, not again! Look out! I got it, I got it! <clears throat> Why don't you watch where you're going, Puffball? Huh? What the? Ha! 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 So! So, uh, Ralph? Now that we're here, now that we're witnessing this, would now be a bad time to tell you that I think things work a little too well around this yard? Quiet, you. Huh? What was that? Well, what do you know? Looks like those slide cars have all been emptied. Isn't that what you wanted, Ralph? I... I think I mean a minute. There was a lot to take in at once. Hey, Dip! That was really something you pulled off there. Only... Do you think you could do it again? How about you unload those pipe wagons for us? Oh, oh no. to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. Hold on to your hard hats, because today we're going to look around Baseline Quarry.
Welcome to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. On today's journey, we'll be traveling back to the Bartlett Bay salt mines to see how they work. Thomas and Tracy enjoy helping out at the Bluesburg Steelworks. They love visiting their friends Phoebe and Ralph and giving them much needed help. Ralph has constantly kept busy running the manager about and shifting ladle cars into place while Phoebe takes on long journeys to Bluesburg West Junction and beyond. But the yard had many orders to fill for the next few weeks and even the extra two engines weren't enough to keep things running. That was when Diesel, Ari, and Bert came in. Diesel was in charge of the docks at Gridinia Bay, while Ari and Bert had been brought in from the Sodor Ironworks for a period. Together, the engines had a known reputation for pranks and mischief making around other engines. They arrived one busy morning. Thomas and Tracy were arranging a freight train for Big Tim to bring out when they oiled into the main yard. Hello, Puffball, said Airy. So the big old steelworks can handle with a teapot on rails. Figured they'd send for some modern diesels to help with the extra workload. You'd be modern 70 years ago, quipped Ralph. Now, as manager's diesel of the Bluesburg Steelworks, we're gonna need you to... And a rusty matchbox on wheels for a boss. Boy, you really need proper diesels around here. Bert greasily chirped. Why, you? All right, said Phoebe coolly. Now that we've gotten to know each other, let's get to work. Diesel, dockyard deliveries. Ari and Bert, you're working the pier. And she confidently went back to the steelwork shed to work. The diesels did prove to help out a little bit, but many problems soon arose with their presence. They shoved trains into the wrong sidings, took any chance they got to make fun of or play tricks on Ralph and Tracy, and Diesel would bump Thomas or take the right away from him. Altogether, the three engines were gradually getting fed up with the diesel's trickery. Phoebe, on the other hand, wasn't particularly bothered. No matter what prank she got, she took it all in stride. Thank you for arranging my freight cars, Ari, she said to him after getting bumped with freight cars. I really needed the washdown, Bert, she said when shunted while taking on water. 
Your brakes need checking, she said when bumped by Diesel. All in all, the freight engine was proving to be very tough to break. And Diesel and his cronies were more determined than ever to push her to the edge. Next morning, Thomas and Phoebe were sent to Selgrib City with a heavy freight train. They were to be transferred to another train heading out for Pennsylvania in the afternoon. Make sure to mind yourselves while we're gone, puffed Phoebe, and mind yourselves if you have to go through Bluesburg West. Huh, said Diesel. We can handle that yard easily. And determined to prove they were capable, he requested that he, Ari, and Bert be coupled to the next train heading out through there. There's a 12 o'clock express to go to Folston, but you'd better watch out there. It'll be rush hour. But the Diesels weren't thinking or listening. They were too busy thinking how clever they were to realize what they were getting themselves into. Nor had they been paying attention to the freight cars in the yard. Who are they to boss us around? Putting us like footballs around the yards. This is Phoebe's yard and Ralph's too. Let's teach him a lesson, boys. The Diesels were soon on their way with their heavy freight train. Although advised by the conductor to take at the very least a transfer caboose, they chose to take it as a triple header. The Diesels on the other railways have no trouble hauling it all at the front with no van, so why should we worry? But they had forgotten that Diesels on the other railway have special devices to minimize the usage of brake vans and cabooses. Bluesburg West is a very dangerous yard for a careless engine. There's few signals located throughout it, and engines must take care and pay close attention when entering or exiting the yards. Engines must always be prepared to give off four short whistles to alert the signalman in the control tower that they are there. But Diesel and the twins hadn't bothered to remember. They just hurried through the tunnel to the junction. The car's chance had come. On! 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 They yelled, and with a mighty shove, the cars took the diesels by surprise and surged the speeding engines into the junction. The signalmen were shocked and put in a full-on panic, frantically trying to avoid a collision. Two mainland diesels nearly hit them at the entrance, they almost hit Callie at an intersection, and Douglas nearly lost his tender. Phew, said Diesel, we're home free now. But they weren't. They hadn't accounted for Alea, a little shunting engine who was pushing a line of freight cars to go to Guapfront Harbor. She was entering the main line. Oh no! Screamed Diesel as he shut his brakes hard on. Then, disaster struck. Diesel was on his side next to the crash, dazed, confused, and bruised. Some of Alea's cars had been thrown right off the track, and with Ari and Bert derailed on the switch, no one from the main line could get into the junction. Hang on! shouted Alea. I'll fetch a crane and send for a few others! By the time the mess was cleared, Phoebe and Thomas were returning from their big run. Phoebe was a little bit entertained from the debacle. Well, 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 three diesels too big for their buffers couldn't manage steel cars, eh? Diesel was fuming. Well, if you treat wagons and engines like that, then it's gonna bite you in the tail lamp, she said firmly. Right, shall we try and haul these cars to the yards? If it helps a bit, said a tired but still willing Thomas. It took some time to tidy up the mess, but soon everything was put right again, and Thomas and Phoebe hauled away the wagons to Faustin. What about Diesel, Larry, and Bert? Well, it wasn't long before the Calva works set them back up and running again. But they don't mess with steel cars anymore, because they know they'll try to fight back. And off to the loading dock, I assume? Yeah, and we gotta get going, Michelle. The boat's probably waited ages for us. All right, all right, cool your pistons, Grace. We'll get it done in twice the time any old crane can. Well, good luck, you two. 
Oh, and uh, mine the... Hey, hey. Oh, what is that smell? Oh. Pong. about here is. I mean, it's a little bit stinky, but stiff as in above is in a real pong. It's like two tons of old boiler sludge mixed with one ton of engine ash and two wagons of stinky cheese all boiled together in an oven. I'm telling you, it's the worst smell I've smelled since the holy hydraulics. Look out below. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm so sorry. I wasn't paying attention and I bungled it up. No worries. At least it solved that fishy situation. <laughs> Boy, you two. You got my load of salmon to take to the Birdmember Station Cafe. You made it this far in the audio file. I get you. I know you're trying to work your best, but you know what? Carry on. Ralph supports you anywhere you go. Unless you're late, not on time. Because you know what? I hate people that aren't on time. So you better finish this project, and you better finish it now! That was a nice little wave in the audio file. Did you see that right there? That was amazing! Hold on, let me try again. Whoop! It did it again! Yeah, I'm probably wasting a lot of time on that. Oh well. I can do a duck! Well, that sounded like a duck to me anyway. Jesus, just go over here. That guy is tall. Okay, with all the work I'm doing, stupid ballast diggings kept me going all day, and it takes forever to shift it out to the quarry. <clears throat> I'll be glad to move the last lot of it out so I can go back to my shed and sleep. Out of the way! Country <clears throat> in motion. We work until the day is through. We can fix a hole in the street to this last and beat. No one can dig it like we do. Ha <laughs> ha! How many more trips to go before the foundation's ready, Mark? Well, at the rate we're moving at, and how much more there is to go from the foundation, I'd say a good half dozen for Diesel. Oh dear, I don't want Diesel fussing over more work. Mark, you and the others get Monty. There's going to be a lot to shift shortly. Mark to the rescue! Let's get Monty! Thank you. 
blaze has happened here? Ooh, I think you'd better be thanking Brewster. Chap shifted a good lot of the stuff for you. Well, that's a load off your mind. Hmm, at least one of them. <laughs> Thank you, Brewster. to Crotunian Shoots, the program in which we see the railways of Crotunia in all of its raw wonder. Today, we'll be visiting the little engines down in Conifton Valley. Libby is a sturdy tank engine in charge of McCrackenton Freight Depot. It's near a small town just near the hills beyond Calville and Faustin, and often gets deliveries from all over the railway. But the depot is not as big as others on the railway, which makes her feel very uptight about it. If it's not Libby's way, then it's the highway. One night, Livy was cooling her firebox for the night when Jebediah, the engine who pulled the Calville milk train, eased into the sheds. He was a very kindly engine, but he was rather worn out compared to the other engines. Ugh, keep your soot off my tanks, old timer, snapped Livy. I've got an image to keep up with my yard. I'm sorry, Livy, puffed Jebediah, but my chug isn't what it used to be. My rods have been jamming up for the last little bit, so I've had to burn more to puff more. But why are you here now? I'm glad you asked, said Mrs. T-Mark, who ran the depot and was preparing to head home for the night. 
We've just gotten a contract to store and deliver dairy products from all over the railway beginning tomorrow. Livy was shocked. Her yard a dairy yard? But, but why? Can't that Cormac keep track of cheese with his silly prawns? I'm sorry, Livy, but we finalized the agreement. But it will keep our yard busy, and it'll open up a lot of opportunities if we do it well. But Livy didn't think so. Her yard had to be the way she wanted it. Next morning, the first load started to crawl in with Jebediah's first train. He brought churns of milk from the Gradenia Bay and Calville Dairies. Then Toodle delivered cream from Inkblotta Towers Creamery. Then Emily delivered butter and eggs from Cliffstone Farms. And Olwen delivered the biggest load of all. Cheeses from the Selgra Bay Cheese Company. Every cheese you could imagine was packed into vans. Cheddar, mozzarella, feta, Swiss, string, stilted, and even Wensleydale. The vans and refrigerated cars all packed the yards. Siding after siding seemed to be moving vans out and then vans in. Livy couldn't stand it. My yard should be an industrial space with construction materials, containers, and important things. Not a storage yard for a cheese festival. Did someone say cheese? And the more and more freight came in, the more and more she got tired of it. And she didn't treat poor Jebediah any nicer. Especially when his rods finally gave out when parking home at the sheds one night. Oh, gosh darn it. Oh, fantastic, she cracked. Now what are we going to do about the Calville train? Don't, Don't fret, fret about it, it, said Mrs. T. Mark. I'm sure Mrs. Ella will find another engine for the job. Now you'd better find a flat car and get poor Jebediah over to the works. And so she did. But her words flew around in her boiler. Find another engine to do the job. Find another engine to do the job. And that's when Livy made a plan. A firelighter comes every morning to ready the engines for the day. After the firelighter left this morning, Livy put her plan into motion. She rounded up every dairy car in the yard and coupled them all together. Then, with a bit of strain, she began to haul the cars off down the line to Bluetsburg West Yard. They've got so many sightings there that that little blue pressure cooker won't mind having some extra work to do. But she'd forgotten about Faustin. Faustin has two main line connections a passenger line that leads up to the big station and the small commuter station, and a freight line that goes through the goods yard. Livy was hoping she'd be taken onto the passenger line where she usually went with her traffic, but the signal man hadn't known about Livy, and she was kept on the goods line, following a slow freight before her. Oh, bother, she said. Miss T. Mark will be finishing her breakfast and driving to the yards by now. But that was about to be the least of her worries. For there came a sound that rattled through her vents. Oh no! She cried. It's the Sunrise Skyrocket! She tried to go faster, but there were too many cars behind her. She thought she would be okay, but just as the train was halfway across the points... Two cars were in pieces. No one had been hurt, and soon Tracy arrived with workmen to help clean up the mess. Miss T. Mark also arrived onto the scene of chaos. Cheese and butter lay all over the track. But worst of all was Livy. She was splattered with cheese all across her side tanks. And as if she didn't make herself look silly enough, two wheels of Stilton were stuck and melting on her two whistles. You're very lucky that only a small part of the deliveries are being delayed thanks to you. But I hope you understand now that there are times when you should talk to us about concerns. But thinking cheese and milk cars make your yard look silly is not one of them. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Once you've been cleaned up and mended, you can take care of Jebediah's milk train until he's repaired. And you learn to think of more than what you'd like the yard to be run like. Yes, ma'am.
The engines always think they are so clever And so they like to bump the trucks around They bump them in the sidings, they bump them in the yard They better beware, they better take care, they better be on their guard Tracy pulls the trucks along the line She's happy and she thinks it's going fine The trucks all start to moan, they rattle and they groan Look out Tracy, watch out Tracy, that's a warning sign Because those trucks on trucks will get the engines every time Trucks on trucks will run the engines off the line They push them here and push them there until they go too fast Then they push them once again laughing while they crash Trumps on trucks will get the engines every time Trumps on trucks will run the engines off the line They don't care how big they are to them, it's just a game Those trolls on trucks will get them all the same Before long Tracy comes to that big hill It's hard work and she's really got to pull But soon she's at the top and then she just won't stop On, on, on the trucks go faster still Because those trucks on trucks will get the engines every time Trucks on trucks will run the engines off the line They push them here and push them there until they go too fast Then they push them once again laughing while they crash Trucks on trucks will get the engines every time Trucks on trucks will run the engines off the line They don't care how big they are to them it's just a game Same. They don't care how big they are to them, it's just a 